In this video we are going to make sure that our clouds and our hills will snap back just like our ground. Because right now when we play the game the hills and the clouds will just continue out of the screen without being snapped back so that it looks like it's an infinite background. Besides making those snap back we will also have to add some grass and some bushes because we forgot to do that in the first video. We can start with the grass, take the grass from the sprite folder and put it as a child object of the ground. When you've done that, you need to make sure that you can see it right now. We can't see any grass here, as you as you noticed. And we need to select the correct layer for the grass before we can see it. So select the grass, go to sorting layer, and set it as foreground. And then put it as one. So now you can see the grass. Then we'll need to tile it or make it larger. And we can do that by selecting the draw mode as tiled. You might have noticed is we if we take the size and increase it, it will increase to the left and the right at the same time, and that's because the pivot point is in the center, so it will increase on the left and the right at the same time. So to make sure that we only expand in one direction, we can select the grass, go to Sprite Editor, select the pivot point and set it as left, and apply this. So when we do that, it's easier for us to select the grass, put it all the way to the left, just like that, and then just start to increase the width as you can see. So now the width is all the way, uh, is, is going to the right without going to the left here. Okay, let's see how large this M1 actually is. If I would take the PG1 and move it up, let's see. I wouldn't like the grass to go over this edge. So, see, we wouldn't like it to go over here. So just select the grass and then make it kind of like around there, I guess. Let's see. Yeah, that fits perfectly. So then we take the grass, we duplicate it, and we put it under the other ground, right there. And we can actually take this one and see the position 0 0.22. Well, it should be 0, but whatever. We select the grass here and put it as 0 0.22 as well. And there we have it. So now we have grass all the way. The next thing we have to do is to add some bushes. It should also be child object of the grass, or the ground. So take one bush there and take the other bush right there and have bush 1 and 2 select the sorting layer inter not in actual interactable sorry um, foreground and set it as 1 and take one bush and we move it a little to the right oh we didn't do it for both of them sorry foreground 1 there we go so we take and move them put them on the ground somewhere you want them it can be up or down it's up to you where you want to put them. You want to put them all the way down on the grass, or you want to put them just on the edge here. I think it looks better if they're just on the edge like that. <coughs> and then you can simply take select them, duplicate them, and move them along. And you can flip them around, flip their position, uh, rotate them, select them, and flip X, for example. And this one flipped X, so we duplicate them. Go over here and take one of them, the other one, flip that X, duplicate them again, move down, and so on. So you, just, you can just keep moving them and then where one X isn't flipped. And you can actually just select all of them, duplicate them, and move them down like that. I don't know how many bushes you want. Um, maybe we don't want that many, though. Um, them like this. Let's see, where, where does the background end? It's right there, so all the bushes from there doesn't need to be there. So we select the background. So all these needs to be deleted. Let's see there. So these needs to go. This one needs to go as well. So if you feel like the space is not enough, then just select them and move them around is uh, exactly as you want them. And as I said, you maybe maybe you don't need that many bushes, so we can delete every other maybe. One, one, two, two, yeah. But again, it's up to you. It's how you would want this. I think some of them are a little close, like that. So when you have added the bushes, you can just take them all, duplicate them, and move them to um, the ground underneath. And then you can just pull them down. Like that you can see one is like 
is right on the edge there. There we go. So now we have the bushes as well, and these are just going to follow along with the with the ground because they're child objects of the ground. And we can put the ground back to a normal speed here. Select them and put five as speed, so it looks yeah, looks normal for the game. There we go. So now we have grass and bushes. So we need to create endpoints for the clouds and and the hills. Let's do it with the hills first. Take the endpoint from the grass, for example, and duplicate it, and put it as a child object of the hills. When you've done that, we need to make sure that it's placed right on the edge of the hills. So let's try to. Oh wait, did I do something wrong here? Yeah, I did. It's the endpoint I want to take. So take the endpoint and put it as a child object. Take the hills. You can move them up a little so it's easier for you to see um, where the pivot should go. Just move this all the way in. Then you just screw zoom in here and make sure that this one goes right on the edge, right there, as close to the edge as possible uh, as we did before. Oh, there we go. So it's 28.8. And when you've done that, you can simply just move it down as you did had it before. Let's see. We can take the hills down here and see the y is minus four. So we select the hills up here and put the y is minus 4 there. So then we have this endpoint, we can just duplicate it and put it as a child object of the hills in PG2. And then we simply take the same position. The X position is 28.8, so you just select that and put it there, and then when you have it, see that it's right on the edge of the hills. Okay. With that done, we need to make sure the hills can see each other and can flip around. So the hills under PG2, needs a reference to the endpoint on hills one and the hills on uh, the neighbor on bg1 needs to uh, reference to the endpoint on hills two besides that we need to go to hills add a component a rigid body 2d that is kinematic as well and the same goes for the hills down here add component rigid body 2d kinematic when that is set the hill should be um, tiling as the background does. We can try to select the hills and put a very high speed on them as well. Let's try to put the speed to 20 instead of 0 0.5 and let's see what happens. And there we go. So now they're snapping back, but they're not snapping correctly back. As you can see, it seems like it's snapping to the center right there. It's not snapping correct. So that's because the hills doesn't have their you guessed it, the pivot point set. So it needs to be a lift as well and apply. Now everything moved as it did before. I forgot to move it before. Hill seals, select them, move them all the way to the left. <coughs> and then we also, of course also need to move the endpoint. Let's just do this one more time. Now we, that was stupid we didn't do that before. But I forgot about that. Maybe you already remembered it. Set it right there. Position there. So you do the same with the endpoint down here. Just copy it from one and put it to the other. And copy the Y value there. Put it back up here. There. So now the endpoint is correct. So let's try to run it again and see that these hills are snapping correctly now. There we go. So now they're snapping correctly. Let's see. Did I snap them too late? Uh, it's fine. We, we can't see the, the snap there. Okay. With that done, we can select the hills and put their speed to 0.5 again. Now we need to do the same thing with the clouds. Let's select the clouds. We're small, medium, large. The small ones are right there. And if we move them up, we can see the last one is there. So simply just, it doesn't really matter how precise the edge is. So we can just take the endpoint from hills and put it under small. And that's the parent. So where do we have it? It's on the parent, yeah. So the endpoint here, just take the small ones, the y position is zero, remember that, move them up, and you can see the endpoint is basically at the last one, so it's fine, it's fine. Then we can take and duplicate the endpoint, put it on the medium, let's see where medium is, it ends right there, so we can take the endpoint and move it, just want to see, yeah, it's also zero, so move them up so we can see what it belongs to it, endpoint is there, just move it a little behind the, f the last one. And then put it back to zero. 
and we do the exact same thing, duplicate the endpoint, put it under large, and select large and see where it ends, basically there. I think it's okay with the endpoint, we can maybe move it a little closer to the last one there. And the endpoint is positioned at 91.1, 96, and 88, okay. So we duplicate the endpoint, put it under small, duplicate that, put it under medium, and duplicate that, and put it under large. Then we need the values, the first endpoint is 88, put that one in 88, the second endpoint was at 96.9, so we put that one at 96.9, and then we have the large one, 91.1, and 91.1. So now the endpoints place correctly, however, we haven't set the neighbors. So small neighbor, if we select small one, the neighbor is the small from hills two. So in point four. So if we select medium, it should be medium from the second one. And we select large, it should be the large one from the second one. Then we select the large here, it should be large from the first one. Select medium, medium from the first one. Oops, that was wrong, medium from the first one there. And if we select the small one, it should be the small one from there. So now our clouds are also uh, supposed to be snapping back. So we can do one test just to make sure that it works. Uh, we can maybe um, maybe hide the large and medium ones. So we only have small clouds. And then set the small speed to 20 instead of 0.1. Let's try to run it. Oh wait, we forgot something. We forgot the rigid body. So select all your clouds, add component, rigid body 2D, and make sure it's a kinematic. Let's try to play again. So when the clouds get out of that, it should snap them back. There we go. So now it, the clouds are also snapping back. And we can just enable all of these again and make sure the small clouds has point one in speed. Okay. So now all our backgrounds are snapping back. We have grass and we have bushes, um, which means we have like an infinite background right now. It, you can see the clouds are very slow, so it's not very often they are going to snap back, if ever. But I feel like we, we need to do that so that we never run out of space. Same goes for the hills, right? They're also moving very, very slow. However, if someone is very good at the game, we don't want them to have the hills disappear. So that's what I want to do in this video. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks for watching my video. Please remember that Inscope Studios is a community founded page. So please consider clicking the support link on the screen to see how you can support me and get something back in return.